Welcome to the session by the Division of Chemistry and Biological Chemistry. Uh, my name is Dr. Sumoth Pularkat, and I'm a senior lecturer here at the division. Uh, and first of all, today, uh, we will have a short introduction by uh, Professor Tan Haosyang, who will tell you briefly about our curriculum and the highlights of our program. Following that, we will have a chat with uh, three of our alumni. So first of all, let me introduce Professor Tan Haosyang. So uh, good morning. Um, so my name is Haosyang, and I'm going to talk about a little bit about our curriculum here in, in, in CBC, Division of Chemistry and Biological Chemistry, and in connection to how you may use this um, opportunity to think about what kind of career prospects there will be um, if you, you have a chemistry degree or chemistry training. Okay, so let me first share my screen first. Okay, so career prospects in uh, chemistry at NTU. Right, um, first off, um, you know, you people may be surprised that the training as a chemist doesn't mean that you, with a degree in chemistry, doesn't mean you end up always to be a chemist. Um, in fact, uh, people with uh, scientific training, chemistry training ends up in all sorts of careers that is spread over all sorts of industries in, in Singapore. So these are some, just some of the uh, logos of the different industries and companies that you have in Singapore where we have chemistry alumni working in. And these are not the exhaustive list, all right? These are some of the ones that um, we managed to basically clobber together and put it up on here. So you can easily see that there are your more traditional chemical companies, petrochemical companies, industrial chemical companies, uh, medicinal chemistry companies, pharmaceutical companies such as Abbott, Anovatis, and so on and so forth. And also you have the chemistry related companies such as the uh, food industry, Nestle, Asia Pacific Blueries, and also uh, something related to, to, to food, um, taste, and flavor companies like Givaldon and Feminish and so on and so forth. So a whole wide ranging of that. And of course, there are also the associated industries in semiconductor, okay? Industrial chemistry, Nippon paint, and so on and so forth. And apart from just the chemical industry, which actually accounts for like one third of Singapore's manufacturing capacity, um, you, we also have a lot of graduates actually in the uh, government sector, um, which are uh, which very active in, in the nation's service. And later on, you're gonna hear from some of the, our alumni about that too. So we have from HSA, Health Science Authority, the police force, the defense science sectors, National Environment Agency, and of course, the Ministry of Education and so on and so forth. Apart from that, um, the non-technical uh, non fields, um, also there are quite a bit. Um, there are also your people in corporate world with a chemistry degree, right? In banks, in financial sector, in financial institution, in major blue chip company like SIA and, and so on and so forth. Right, to put some faces to uh, the examples that we uh, talked about just now. So we have Kenneth Gunn here, who is part of the Home Team Science and Technology Agency, HTX for short. And we also have in the nation service of the nation, uh, people like um, Anne, who is part of the police force, okay? So with their chemical training, and of course, like with the skills that pick up over this uh, degree program, uh, they could contribute to all sorts of like um, um, sectors. And we also have in the education sector, um, people not just in the Ministry of Education, providing, you know, like being teachers in um, schools, um, in secondary schools, in JCs, but also in the tertiary institution, in the polytechnics and some in the universities as well. And in the more private sector, um, of course, the chemistry industry, which we have a lot, and here we just have one of them. Quite a number of people, or quite a number of our alumni are in Pfizer, such as uh, Sherman here. And also in the more non-traditional route, you wouldn't really be thinking that chemistry Actually, chemi chemistry students actually make very good financial, uh, you know, like uh, bankers and then finance um, consultants. But they, there we are, we have quite a number of them out there um, in uh, Credit Suisse, for example, and bankers in, in various banks in Singapore, such as Trishna. And of course, apart from all the industries, so some people, quite a number of our um, uh, alumni also end up doing research. And if you want to pursue a career in research, one of the major, uh, main things that you need to do is pursuing a PhD, and quite a number of our best, most talented students are also, um, after they graduate from the undergraduate degree, proceed on with 
very uh, good scholarships to pursue their PhD education. So just after these examples, um, let me just kind of like um, kind of con concretize uh, what kind of contributions that the degree in chemistry can make towards your career choices and career prospects. So the past years have given us a lot of like, uh, in a sense, like warning uh, signs, right? That um, times are very uncertain. Suddenly some things can change and a lot of things that you plan for will have to be changed suddenly and very abruptly. So what am I, why do I um, say that? Because we feel that actually a scientific education is the best cure for times in uncertainty. Why? Because you cannot predict what goes on, what's going to come about. So, but one thing you know is when whatever future problems that arises to get the solutions, you've got to know what are the fundamentals. So fundamentals, fundamentals, fundamentals are what matters in the years to come with all these uncertainties. Okay, so where do you get the fundamentals? Well, you go for the basic science training to, to learn all the fundamentals. And also one, one key aspect of a scientific education, it is usually very curiosity driven, okay? Um, as opposed to other programs that basically, you know, teaches you a fixed set of tools. And from there, you use the fixed set of tools and try to solve the problem. In science, it's not so much a fixed set of tools, but really it is curiosity driven way of approach of um, teaching you how to ask the correct questions and how to think of the box to find relevant solutions based on the fundamentals that you use. And of course, without, um, you know, like, um, a, in the scientific training, what's uh, given is the very strong analytical and logical aspects of the training. Okay, you solve problems by looking at the problems in a very calm and rational way and solve it. Um, to help you do that, uh, the, the, the science education in NTU, not just chemistry, but the science overall, um, we stress on a well, very well designed basic syllabus to train you in the fundamentals. And for those people who actually have uh, slightly more interest in certain other fields. And of course, there are certain aspects of the economy that we know won't be going away in the next five to 10 years. There, there, we have niche programs for greater depth and interest for students of, uh, with that interest. And of course, um, you know, you can have all the substance in the world, but uh, that would be a necessary condition for success, but it may not be the sufficient condition because a little bit of packaging never uh, harm anyone. And the reputation of where you get the degree from is definitely very important um, as well. So NTU chemistry pride ourselves as a very high in reputation. It's not just well regarded uh, by the common folks, but also by the people in the know in the industries as well. All right, that's all I have for you for the moment. Um, so we'll be happy to answer some questions and we're gonna stay around and we're gonna have we're gonna talk to, with some of our alumni here. And thank you for your attention and stay curious. Thank okay. you, Hao Xiang. Thank you. Uh, so as Professor Hao Xiang mentioned, uh, if you would like to know more about our curriculum, you can always visit our website where you can get all the details. So now what we will do is we will have a chat. We are fortunate today to have three of our alumni with us, and three alumni from completely different fields, right? So I will uh, let them introduce themselves and let them say a little bit about how the chemistry curriculum and the chemistry program that they uh, had in CBC has helped them in their current career. Uh, first of all, we'll have Asifa. Asifa, yeah. Thanks, thanks, Prof. Uh, hi, my name is Ashifa, so I'm, uh, I suppose I have 30 seconds to introduce myself, so I'll do that very quickly. Uh, my name is Ashifa, I am a policy officer right now, working in the Ministry of Trade Industry. Uh, before that, I actually, uh, maybe maybe I'll start with myself with uh, where I, I studied at. I graduated in 2013, I'm Bachelor of Science with Honours, and I then continued on with my PhD in the same school in NTU. Uh, next four years and graduated in 2017. So after graduation, I joined the Agency of Science, Technology and Research, ASTAR. Uh, that's where I actually worked uh, as a public research administrator in the headquarters more than the research institute. So in ASTAR, uh, as a policy officer, I have had the opportunity to look at 
grant proposals, research grants, and so on and so forth. And um, uh, I have then since moved to the Ministry of Trade and Industry as a policy officer, but um, as a seconded officer. So technically, I am still uh, A star, still my paymaster, but it's just being seconded as a policy officer in MTI. So that's just a quick introduction for me, Prof, and what I do. Next, we have uh, Rosidi. Rosidi, you would like to introduce yourself, please? Right. Thank you so much, Prof. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Rishdi, Right. I'm the co-founder of CEO of Reactor School. Reactor School is an entrepreneurship and startup school. So we help students turn their ideas into projects and their projects into companies. I graduated soon after Ashifa. I think it was sometime around February 2014 from the School of Chemistry and Biological Chemistry. I also did a minor in entrepreneurship. Right after graduating from school, I joined Enterprise Singapore. So that's a statutory board under the Ministry for Trade Industry. And a lot of work that I did was to consult for SMEs and startups. So it's been a while since I graduated. And I'm very happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And welcome back to campus, at least virtually. <laughs> OK, last but not the least, we have Shi Siuhi. Siuhi, would like to talk a little bit about yourself and your career path after graduation? Thanks, Prof. Uh, my name is Xiu Hui. Um, I graduated in 2009 with um, the bachelor. And then uh, I started an R&D career with DSO National Laboratories. After that, I decided to further my studies. And uh, I went back to NTU SPMS again. And I obtained my PhD in 2015. And that's the same year that I joined uh, Singapore Police Force. Uh, which is now we are all moved, all the civilians are moved on, uh, have uh, been moved to HTX, a new stat board, uh, which is called the Home Team Science and Tech Agency. Um, so, but currently I'm still working for Forward Deploy at uh, Singapore Police Force uh, as a senior crime scene specialist. Um, currently I'm situated in Tangling Division, whereby uh, I will lead the team of eight to go to uh, the crime scene, um, tackling volume crimes such as housebreaking and all. So I think a lot of people in the science industry will be interested in, in my job. So uh, feel free to ask me any question after this. So back to you, Prof. Okay, thank you. Thank you, all of you. Uh, okay, so let me start off with CV. So. In your current job, right, uh, I understand that one of the inspirations for joining this line of work was the Forensic Science course when you were a student here in CBC, right? Uh, yes. Can you talk a little bit about how that course sparked your interest and also a little bit about uh, the core skills that you learned in CBC, which is still helping you in your day-to-day -day work? Back then when I took up the module forensic um, science, uh, I think it was by Dr. Bates. Um, so the module was very interesting. Um, every week they have uh, different speakers from different industry, including from the HS HSA uh, pathologist department and they send the pathologists to, to give a talk to us. So that was when I realized that, oh, this is actually a very meaningful job where science can be applied in. Uh, that's why I joined this career. And I realized that whatever that I have learned in school, such as all the analytical skills, and just now, like what Dr. Tan Hao-Xiang has mentioned, logical thinking, analytical skills, um, plus your scientific knowledge, those technical skills that you have learned uh, will be combined in your day-to-day -day job. And because I face the member of public very often, um, so um, there are some soft skills required. And this is when, uh, when obtaining my education in NTU helps a lot because I joined some clubs and events and that's when I broaden my networking skills and socializing skills. So in combination of um, the education, knowledge uh, and the socialization skills that I've obtained in NTU actually has helped greatly in my day-to-day -day job right now. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Prasadi, you, you work in a field which is considered as a very non-traditional for a chemistry graduate, right? I understand that you uh, you run, you are the star, a founder and CEO of Reactor School, which is a startup ecosystem development and training uh, firm. So uh, it's very non-traditional. No, no, uh, usually it's not something that a chemistry graduate is seen in, right? But can you talk a little bit about uh, how your time at CBC Right. right. Thanks so much, the Prof. stuff that you learned and the way that you approach things, uh, looking at problems and looking for solutions, how that has helped in your current job. Yeah, sure. 
And you know, you know, it's really funny because every time when I introduce myself to people, they they always can't believe that I'm from a chemistry major, right? <laughs> yeah, so I've got to explain to them, yeah, I'm organic chemistry by training. You know, my final year project was on cyclophosphatization and pen petrocyclics. And they're like, what exactly is that? But there are a few ways, you know, that this has helped me. I think one, there's actually a lot of parallels between entrepreneurship, start some tech and chemistry. Uh, chemistry, especially organic chemistry, looks at creating, right? You're looking at zero to one. Right, you're trying to figure out what is possible. Uh, that's pretty much what Startups and Tech is about. You're trying to create something, you know, whether it's a community or mobile app, so on and so forth. But I think one of the interesting things about a chemical training is that it teaches you how to read long form. You know, when you go through the journals, when you're working with NMR machines, and you're pouring through all the research stuff, right? And if you're trying to build a tech company, especially a high tech company, you need to learn how to be able to read long form. It's just so important that you're able to string together coherent thought and you're working at the bleeding edge of knowledge creation, right? Pretty much that's what high-tech startups is all about, right? So I'm also in the venture capital space. So I do meet a lot of tech companies. I consult for them, uh, invest in some of them, some of this especially. And I think the other interesting thing is that because you do have a technical background, it's, you're able to talk to the startups at a different level altogether, right? You can look at the technical side of things you know, when I'm speaking to the biotech companies, for example, I understand, you know, what they're trying to do. When I'm talking to the environmental waste startups, you know, I can talk to them on a technical basis. And that's really fun. So it's not just superficial business talk and understanding about the viability about the startup, but you're able to go into the exact mechanics of how these companies are trying to change the world. Okay, thank you. I think you explained it very nicely. And uh, so it's not surprising that many of our chemistry graduates they go for a, a career in uh, what is considered as very non-traditional, just like yours, but the core skills and uh, the, the way that you got trained and the mindset training that you undergo uh, is does really come in handy irrespective of the field. Thank you. Uh, Asif, you, you work in mainly, your work over the past few years have been mainly in formulating governmental policy with different government agencies and such. So again, just like Rusadi, it's a little bit non-traditional, but I'm pretty sure that your training in CBC does come in handy and has helped you along the way. Can you touch a little bit about that on that? Yes, yes, Prof. Uh, certainly, definitely. I, um, you know, and in chemistry, we we learn the fundamentals, and I um, like um, our friends here, Xu Hui and Rushdi, has mentioned how uh, you know it's important to have the analytical skills and logical skills. Knowing the fundamentals is actually really useful. And it actually has been very useful for me in um, shaping my thoughts and, and also, you know, as a public research administrator, when I look at uh, the various proposals that scientists do come to us, um, it's important to actually know uh, and have some scientific background uh, in that regard. So that has actually been very useful. And also when you communicate with the scientists, some degree, uh, some, some credibility is also useful. You can have a separate major in business and communicating with a fellow scientist on a technical modality on how you treat cancer. So it has been um, really useful for me. Um, this sort of fundamental knowledge has been useful. Moving on actually, so when I moved on into the ministry and I looked at shaping and administration, administrating policies, shaping policies for the energy security of a country, it would be the other skills, uh, things like uh, how we communicate with people, uh, so beyond the scientific curriculum that we learn in CBC, there's also, you know, the unrestricted electives that we actually go through. Uh, you know, we, we also had to go through courses like business, marketing. I think those things are actually, it has been really useful in helping to boost my confidence in how we shape, our, uh, how we communicate with people, how we um, also present ourselves. So I, I think holistically, the entire experience has been very useful. And not just the fundamentals, not just the analytical skills, but I think the entire uh, curriculum and the way it's shaped, it has, had, has, been, um, uh, it has helped me in, in, in many ways, more than one. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Asifa. Uh, I think the three of you has really uh, brought forth the fact that, uh, you know, the core training that you received, the curriculum that we have, and the skills that you gained have really helped you in your diverse careers that you have chosen. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all three of you for sharing your uh, how the, the chemistry program at CBC has helped you and how you still use some of the skills that you learned and uh, uh, soft skills that you have picked up during your time here in NTU. So uh, moving on, uh, 
I would like to ask you if you have any advice for students who are potentially looking for a program in science uh, and pursuing a program in science, uh, in particular in chemistry and for a future career. Uh, so we'll start off first with Asifa. Asifa, any advice for aspiring chemists, aspiring <laughs> scientists? Sure, Prof. Uh, I think one advice is really to just keep your mind open. Um, when I first joined um, this course as a chemist, you know, I, I've told myself, yeah, I wanted to be inside a scientist, work in, you know, a pharmaceutical company right after. But I end up becoming a research administrator, you know, and a policy officer in a ministry, nonetheless. Um, it, it was also because of the fact that, you know, it's always to keep an open mind and always be receptive to opportunities. And that's exactly what has happened. You know, I, I told myself as uh, when I entered in and uh, I just wanted to do my best and uh, enjoy myself into it th throughout the entire process and keep my mind open. And that's precisely what I did. And to also have fun and look beyond just, just the curriculum, just the fundamentals, but also just the entire holistic experience. Get to know friends, uh, get to know, build your network, know your professors, very friendly professors, um, and also know that there are many, many opportunities out there. Uh, beyond science and you know science is important and it's useful for every every aspect of your life really yeah and uh, being a policy officer is actually just one example of that yeah thank you thank you so my parting advice for the incoming students i've got three uh, the first one is learning to read long form like i mentioned before to so learn how to read a book from cover to cover learn how to appreciate technical journals don't just read three minute articles or 15 second tiktoks there's just so much more out there the second thing is pick up an ASEAN language. So I've been traveling a lot around Southeast Asia. We are in the golden age of Southeast Asia. So whether it's Thai, Khmer, Vietnamese, Laotian, you know, uh, pick up something, one of the ASEAN languages and learn how to work around the region. The third one is that your career is not going to be linear. All right. So be prepared for diagonal shifts. So basically undergraduate life really is what you think out of it. And it's up to you to go out there and explore and you know, try things out and see where that takes you. Okay, thank you. I think I think you put it very nicely because uh, uh, of course, you know, none of us can predict uh, two or three years ago where, which career and what, what area we are going to headed to, but having the right mindset and uh, being open to uh, absorbing all the things that the campus has to offer, not just academic life, but also the social aspect, the networking aspect. I believe that is something that is timeless, you know, for any career spanning any field. That's a skills that you will always uh, need, right? Thank you, thank you very much.